What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Airflow Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Thomas. Um, it's a blessing to be here um, for another episode. Um, you know, it, it's I just reflect back to 2024, uh, sorry, 2023. And the interesting part about 2023 was that I, I didn't do that many episodes. I went back and looked at how many episodes I did, and I, I realized that I got so far uh, just involved with work and everything else that I, I didn't really keep up with what I needed to do with this. Um, so I wanted to come out a little different in 2024. Um, you know, we've launched the, the airflow podcast as a part of the billionaire flow YouTube channel. So, uh, go check us out. We're on YouTube. So you can look us up at, at billionaire flow. Um, and under the podcast section there and airflow podcast is listed there. So we'll still be at the same place as we were before um, in terms of any podcast platforms out there, like um, you know, iHeartRadio, we're on there now, um, Apple Podcasts, things like that. So please be willing to check us out there. Uh, like, share, subscribe. I'm really trying to grow the community. So I can't do that if I don't have, you know, people listening. So if, if any of the content that you hear is great and you like it, please take a look, take a, uh, just take a little bit of time just to share it and like it. Um, you also find on our billionaire flow YouTube channel. Um, it's a little different um, because I'm always of the belief of uplifting and inspiring and encouraging, motivating things like that from different levels, you know, uh, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. I love to laugh. I love to joke. Um, but I think if, Folks have listened to my episodes previously. They know that I try to bring content that is going to push the needle in the positive direction. So, yeah, while I listen to, you know, Club Shay Shay and, you know, other great podcasts out there to get different kinds of things, you know, I'm always going to be a person that's going to go for positivity um, in the midst of everything that's going on in the world. We all need a bit of motivation and inspiration. So that's what this is about. So if you're a first time listener, thank you for joining. Um, I appreciate it and, and I welcome all feedback. And that's one of the things I'm really excited about with YouTube because we're really trying to grow our YouTube uh, platform and being able to, to link the two of these together uh, from a podcast perspective and the YouTube channel was a pretty big deal. Uh, so I definitely wanted to, to make sure that we can get started in 2021 beginning with that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leveraging a, a different platform um and it's going to take some tweaks to make it right so i just ask you all to bear with me as we continue to go through this journey but uh this year i'm really pushing to get back to a weekly sort of episodic um format in 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 cadence and i've got plenty to share and I, and, and it's not just me um i also came to this platform because i want to get back to really doing more of the interviews and bringing people on um, who have great stories to share, great information to share. So um, that there's a lot of things that I've got to do and I've got to really push myself to do it so that I can make sure that I'm bringing forth what God has, has given me to bring forth. And that's why I started the podcast. So there's two things that I'll share and then we'll get into what our episode is about today. But, you know, for those that are first time since we're starting off a new year, I just want to, you know, kind of level set things. Billionaire Flow is a apparel brand that, and, 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 and the name, the logo that God gave me um, back in 2019. It was October 2019. And I took that and I licensed or I got a license for it. Um, to to have that logo and that design so it is trademarked um under for me i have that name trademark and i did that because you know with billionaire flow you know i was all i was in prayer for a while uh, i was in a time of fasting and, and praying and really just asking god you know what do i need to do because before that i had it my wife and i were doing a t-shirt company called kingdom designs and we were doing custom vinyl uh, shirts, hoodies, things like that, you know, um, and I still have a lot of the equipment. And, and so I wanted to get to a place where I create a brand. Um, and I, what I wanted it to be kingdom based, 
And I wanted it to be focused on really when people see it, they think of themselves, they see themselves, they feel like a billionaire. So it's a play and you can kind of see the hat, but it's a play on, you know, the word billionaire, except it's spelled differently. So, um, you know, it's for those that are not, are, are not watching this on YouTube and are listening, it's B I L L I O N H E I R billionaire and then flow. And the flow part was more of, you know, flowing in the, the blessing that was passed down from to, from God to Abraham and his sons, Isaac and Jacob, and, you know, all their descendants. And once you become part of the kingdom, you become heir. Um, and as an heir, you know, you the flow is really you're entitled to flow in everything uh, that God has promised for um, for those those um, descendants of Abraham. So that's where the, 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 it came from. And it's really, you know, it's not about a lot of people say, Oh, billionaire, you know, money, you know, you hear, you see, and and there's some great brands out there. I think there's the millions, billions, trillions, um, you know, which I love that. Um, And I think the financial piece is always a part of the blessing, the, the abundance that comes, but it's so much more than that. You know, it is about, carrying yourself and living like an heir. So when you wear it, you know, you're an ambassador for the kingdom. And, you know, as much as I love my sports teams, shout out to the U of M Wolverines winning the national championship. Uh, we got one and shout out to my Detroit lions who God to win the division was big. So, um, you know, that, I'm very excited as a as a fan of both teams growing up in Michigan and being able to to see them get back to a sense of dominance and, and, and winning mindset. So it was it was exciting to see that uh, Wolverines winning a championship was very big. Um, and then seeing Detroit playing at the level they're playing, you know, I think they've got just as much of a chance over the next year or so to win the Super Bowl or get there. So it's exciting times uh, if we can get our Tigers and Pistons and Red Wings back to kind of prominence then it'll be a great day a great time in detroit but i know they're celebrating the the detroit lions and you know the the state of michigan celebrating um you know the michigan wolverine so i I will get back on track here but that's where billionaire flow came from another time and during prayer you know i was asking god you know about just talking about podcasts and i told my wife, I said, you know, I really had this, this vision from God about, you know, creating a podcast. And I know a lot of people were doing it. And I was like, yeah, there's a lot of people out there. And I did some research and started looking up equipment and just different aspects of, um, just different aspects of actually, uh, doing what it takes to do a podcast. And so, you know, I went back to God and I'm like, what would be a good, a good name for it? that really embodies what I'm trying to do. And so it just kind of linked to the brand, you know, in this airflow, you know, you, and it's, again, it's a play on words because people here, you know, you're thinking of a podcast, something that's going to be heard, you know, out in people's cars, they're listening to it on their, their cell phones they're listening to it, you know, in different, in different venues, but it's, it's talking, it's air, you know, so air is flowing. Um, but, it's again, playing on the air, the word air as A T I R. So again, making sure that it's kingdom based, um, but it's tip strategies is just talking to people inspiration, motivation, as I said, so they're all linked together, but that is the, the real purpose of the podcast. And that's why, um, I'm really rededicating myself for 2024 to, to, to do what I need to do, what I've been called to do. And, you know, make this my focus. Now, you know, between this and, and the the apparel, you know, my I would love for this to be what propels my family to the next level. Um, you know, I know that God has called me to do it, so He's going to give me everything I need to be able to do it. Um, and I would love to get to the place I really believe to get to the place where I can do it at a level of, you know, some of the big time podcasters. Um, you know people who are out there doing YouTube channels, you know, uh, I'm not about creating viral break the moment, uh, break the internet type moments. Um, but I want people that when they walk away from this show, whether they're guests or listeners, that they, they feel like they have something they can, they can, 
um, and kind of hold on to something that can relate to, to what I'm talking about. So, or what the guests are talking about. So that was kind of the 10 minute intro, um, you know, as we start out this new year. Uh, so we'll get into what this episode is about. Um, I call it rise and rise is call is basically reclaiming identity and shattering expectations. And the reason and I'll get more into the detail of the title, but again, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the acronym for rise is reclaiming identity and shattering expectations. And so where that really came from is just, I've started recognizing some different things about myself. Um, and I think this kind of played into why it was difficult for me to continue to build upon a podcast. Um, it was, sometimes it's challenging when I look at the, some of the successes I've had in life um, and career uh, in my career and just different things. And it sort of stops me from going to another level and it, it's me. It's not anybody else that's doing that. And that thing is, and what I what I've I guess found a term for it is imposter syndrome. And for those that don't know what imposter syndrome is, it's I guess it's defined as a psychological pattern um, where basically as an individual you you doubt your accomplishments, you know, and you have fear that you know you're basically be exposed as a fraud, like you know you don't know what you're talking about, you're not good, and and you know it it basically stops you from it can be debilitating. It can be, it can be crippling. It can be something that could, could hold you down uh, and, and stop you from moving forward. So, and there's been a lot of individuals who experience it. Um, you know, one of the, you know, kind of a, the, the last person that I've heard say something about having imposter syndrome is, you know, the, the uh, viral internet food critic. And he's more than that. He was an MMA fighter, but he does a lot of great work um, and I've, I've reached out to him through Instagram. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get him on the podcast, but his name is Keith Lee. Um, and he mentioned that, you know, he's got extreme imposter syndrome. He's not sure why he's being blessed the way he's blessed. And you know, I heard him say that. And, and, and it's interesting because I was already going to do an episode about imposter syndrome because that's what I wanted to. I really wanted to end the year last year with that. But um, I, I just didn't. So I came back into this year and I said in the first episode, I want to do um, that. But in the meet in between that time, I heard him say that. And, you know, God was just showing me something, um, you know, and, and, and just to understand. So the, the, the whole idea around imposter syndrome came about in 1978. So it was interesting because I was born in 1978. So, um, just to know that that's where it kind of, I, I don't think it started then obviously, but I think that's where they actually coined that term, um, of imposter syndrome. It is not considered a mental disorder. Um, but it is, they, they say it's a common phenomenon amongst, um, high achievers. So when you look at people who have imposter syndromes, you know, and some people may say, well, I don't think I'm a high achiever, you know, but that is a part of that process, right? You, you kind of have this, this sim these symptoms of like self doubt. Um, you know, I'm a very spiritual person. I have a great connection with God and, and, you know, I definitely know that my blessings and everything I have come from him, but for some people they have symptoms where it's uh, attributing their success to luck. Or they feel like they have imposter syndrome based off of a fear of not meeting expectations. So again, that goes back to the whole um, the whole title of what what this uh, podcast episode is about. And then you know it's one of those things where I'm really trying to make sure that I don't limit myself from what God has called me to do and to and, and who He's called me to be. Um, and I think that's really what the the impact of everything that I felt, especially over the last couple of years, but this year was, was one of the big, I'm sorry, last year was one of the big, big kind of points in my life where I really identified that. Um, you know, when you start th thinking about the, the impacts, um, and it impacts, you know, job performance, you know, my relationships, 
Um, and it can, it can drive you to have mental health issues. So, you know, a lot of people who go through imposter syndrome, you have sort of anxiety and, and depression. Um, I can just tell you just in my job, you know, my, my job, I'm blessed to have the position that I have in working, doing what I've been able to do. And I've been successful in that. Um, but last year, towards the, the, the end of first quarter of last year, I got promoted to a different position. Um, and it was interesting because I got it and I didn't get super excited about it because it was like, am I really supposed to, you know, I start questioning, am I supposed to be in that, in this position? And that's that whole mindset of self doubt, you know, even though I know I've, when I step back and look, I've been working very hard. Um, and it, and it hasn't been perfect. Um, and I haven't, I've I've made some mistakes, uh, but I, I do hold, hold myself to a high regard, and I am very difficult hard on myself. Um, and I think that for me is is has been one of the challenges because it's like you always want to I always want to do well, but then I'm like, if I continue to move up, then that puts me into a, a greater place of exposure. And then you know, if if I mess up, then it's going to be like, oh, he really shouldn't have been here. You know, he wasn't qualified and things like that. So there's been a lot of times where I felt that way Um, and, and, and not just with the job I just got, but in my whole journey, like God's hand has moved through my career. Um, he, he's, he's really moved through my career and, and helped me, you know, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm where I am and it started with, you know, faith and a prayer just to say, God, you know, you know, the needs of my family, you know, the desires of my heart when it comes to my career and, you know, I turn it all over to you and the change had to start internally. But ever since then, you know, I've been able to move up to different layer levels and, and, you know, see promotions where increases come from, you know, financially different things, you know, titles, all that stuff. Um, and it's great, but it, it, it's still, there was always this point of, am I supposed to be here? And it it almost made me feel bad because it's like, I'm questioning God for blessing me, but I asked for it, but I'm questioning like, am I really, am I really the right person? Um, So that, that was definitely a challenge. Um, And I'm, I'm still working through it Uh, more. So now it's, it's kind of my mind is transitioning from really corporate America to um, entrepreneurship. And I think that's another area for me. When you start talking about, you know, how I felt for job performances, you start thinking, I start thinking about just, you know, being an entrepreneur, starting a business. And, you know, my wife and I, we've, we've done so many different things. We've, we've built so many things and, and, um, you know, there's always that, that thought in the back of my mind, like, what if I do blow up from this, you know, from the entrepreneurial thing, you know, and, and, and there's that mindset of, oh, my goodness, you know, like people are going to want to see me and this, that and the other, even with the podcast. You know, one of the main reasons why I didn't do video recordings of my podcast and I did start. I do have a few videos out there, but the reason why I didn't continue to do it, I'm like people are going to see my face. And, you know, if I if I offend somebody, you know, and you start second guessing things, I'm like, man, you know, or you get too big and. You know, you just start thinking like people see you and you mess up or you make a mistake and now you're going to you know, lose it all. And it, it just got to a place where I was like, OK, I'm thinking about the wrong things. I've got to focus on what God has promised me, what God has told me to do and and be obedient no matter what happens. There's always going to be people that's going to that's gonna disagree with you. You can you can say, you know, the most positive thing I, I did. I posted something on Facebook. Um I think it might've been last week or the week before. And it was just, it was a meme. Uh, it was a picture of a glass of water. And, you know, I said, watch this. I can get people to argue over this. And I just put the picture up there. And then, you know, as a joke, but people were giving me all kinds of things like, well, or I, I said it was a cup of water. Somebody looked at it like it was a glass of water. And then, then somebody was like, well, it's actually a, a glass of Sprite. And then, you know, it was just all kinds of things going back and forth. But, no matter what you do, no matter what, there's always going to be people who will troll you that are, that just want to argue for the sake of arguing. And I think the best thing to do is, you know, if you know who you are and you know what you've been called to do, 
Um, I think that's just what the important part about it is, because if I if I continue to limit myself, you know, personally, because of what I think other people are going to think or other people are going to feel and, and, you know, this whole imposter syndrome feeling that I have at times, then I'm never going to reach the heights that I'm supposed to reach. I'm going to put a ceiling on my life where I shouldn't have a ceiling. You know, it should be an open sky of, of just things that I can continue to rise and rise and rise until God tells me this is where you're at. Um, you know, and, and, and I have to understand that that target is always going to be moving. So, you know, that's, you know, I'll address, you know, the, I'll address the, um, you know, the Cat Williams and, you know, interview on Club Shay Shay, you know, he's talking about, you know, different entertainers. And, you know, I heard somebody say, you know, the worst thing you can do in a situation like that is respond. You know, don't give it the energy. And so when I think about if somebody did have something to say about me, if somebody had something negative to to bring about um, concerning something that I've done or, you know, whatever. And and not to say that I, I don't do anything, I won't do anything wrong or I won't mess up. I won't say something wrong, but, you know, it'd be little stuff, the way I look, the way I talk, you know, people just want to be, um, people just want to be critical. And I think from that perspective, that's why I really have to get to the place of understanding that, if I'm doing this from my heart based off of what God is telling me, then I can't worry about all that. I've got to be, I've got to be secure in my relationship with God and secure in understanding that my purpose is bigger than somebody else's opinion. Um, so uh, that's really where I wanted to go with on, on that piece of it. You know, when I talk about job, talk about, um, you know, businesses. So, you know, I'm going to continue to push this thing forward. You know, I'm going to continue to grow, grow my brand, you know, not worry about, you know, what other people may think um, in, in terms of now, obviously, from a customer perspective, from a listener perspective, I care about what my viewers think and I want them to to offer feedback um, and maybe some of the ways that I can do things a little better. But I'm never going to apologize for, you know, the the content that I get because it comes from, you know, listening to God and and my relationship. and then you know, the people that I bring on here, I bring them on because I understand that the information that they have, while it's also, it's, it's usually always something that I'm going to love and, and really want to, um, really want to use for my own self and my family. You know, if it's going to help me, I know it's going to help somebody else. So I always want to share that kind of information. So again, that's why, you know, the goal is to continue to grow that. Now, when you look at relationship strains, um, and just, and, and how an imposter syndrome, I think I felt like that even before I got married, before I, I got engaged, you know, I was like, man, you know, being a husband, taking on a wife, the responsibility of, of a family, you know, and I've always wanted to have a family. And just as it got to that place, it was like, man, you know, am I really supposed to be married? Am I supposed to be with this woman? Does, does do I deserve her? And I have kids, and you look at them like, man, am I really going to be able to 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 be the the father that I need to be? And you kind of get scared about, you know, I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that because, you know, I don't, I, I just, you know, I don't know if I deserve these folks. You know, do I deserve a wife? Do I deserve my family? Should I just be alone? And there were times where I felt like that, even even since I've had kids and my kids are, are almost grown, you know, the youngest is 13, the oldest is 20. I'm going to 17 year old. So they're not babies anymore, but there's times I look at them like, man, you know, I'm proud of them. And it's like, did I, how did I deserve this? Or do I deserve this? You know? And it, it just causes things because when you have those kind of, we have the, when you feel imposter syndrome. There's just those, those times and opportunities where it's like, it didn't have to be that way. Some of the things that you say, some of the way you react to certain situations, it's like that wasn't even necessary for you to do that. Um, you know, or it's okay to speak positive about this, or it's okay to speak positive about that, you know, and, and, and not have to worry about the backlash. If you're feeling happy, or you're feeling excited about your wife. You know, I remember there was a time where just, you know, giving my wife 
attention, you know, on social media and doing certain things, and you get people sending messages like, "Oh, you you doing this and that." It's like, I want people to think I'm trying to be fake or phony. I'm like, why do I care? You know, why do I care what they think if that's how I really feel? And I, and I do. You know, when I when I post stuff about my wife or just in general how I'm appreciative of her, you know. I don't do it for a show, but I want to make sure it's it's known public the same way as I want to make sure it's known private and and, and not sa- self-sabotage things. And I think that's another key term that comes with imposter syndrome is really self-sabotaging. Um, you're, blocking, you're blocking your own blessings, essentially. Um, the last part is in terms of, you know, the impact that you see is, is the mental health. Um, anxiety and depression and just not feeling like you want to do anything that's going to take you to the next level. Like I'm just going to stay in this little bubble that I'm in right now and just kind of get through each day because again, I don't want to move in a place that, that um, I just don't want to move into a place where it's going to bring attention to me uh, to where I can potentially look like a failure or look like I've made a mistake or something like that. So you know, just going back to understanding that, you know, that fear of feeling like you are a fraud, like you're, you're, you're fake, you know, um, and just doubting all the personal, like, I don't want to tell people of, of things that I've done well or that I've gotten um, an accomplishment for, you know, work and stuff like that. There's been times where I wouldn't even tell my wife, like, oh, this happened, and, you know, I'll be all excited. I'm like, I don't want to share that, you know, it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. Um, yeah, but I, I'll do it for my kids because I love sharing if my kids do something well. And it's not a bragging type of thing, but you know, I think when it comes to just myself, it, it's just that 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 impact that I had. Um, I think just understanding and, and interesting in the studies there. There's a study that says that you know, obviously it affects all genders, but it says it the studies show women might experience it more intensely. Um, and just really looking at why this is important for me and why this is even a topic is because that is having imposter syndrome is totally the opposite of what God has intended for his children. God wants to bless us. God wants to give us the desires of our heart. You know, we're doing the things that we are called to do if we're walking in purpose God really wants to make sure you have it. So it's it's really a trick of the enemy to keep us down and make us feel that way because it's like, okay, I'm going to put this ceiling on you on myself. I'm not going to go further. So I'm not going to reach the purpose that, I'm, that I want to be at. And the enemy is cool with that. The enemy's like, that's where I want you to do because he knows where you're at. He knows where you, the potential that you can have. And he wants to destroy that and, and steal, steal, you know, that that sense of joy, that sense of accomplishment, um, just that that sense of of promoting, moving up. So for me, it's 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 always one of those things where I go back to say, I feel like I was being hypocritical because I'm saying I love the Lord and I'm thankful for my blessings on one hand. But on the other hand, I'm like, I'm scared to receive these things. I'm scared to to do this stuff. Um, I think I mentioned in another another podcast episode, you know, I had been, I, I had a vision board. I've had it, a picture posted of a Tesla. And I've, you know, I know people have their own personal opinions about Teslas, but I had it posted. I've, I've been looking at them for about five years now, um, you know, and I was just going back and forth about it. It was like, oh, look, the, the prices of them, like, God, you know, I want be able to buy one of those and and you know this that and the other and that was just my whole mindset and you know i would i would watch videos about them like okay when i get one i'll understand what to do in this situation and know how to handle them you know how to take care of them how to use the computer how to drive you know i did everything to figure it out um so that when i got it i'll be ready to drive it day one um and you know i, I kept believing for it, i kept believing for it so you know, for Father's Day last year, my wife came to me or right before Father's Day, she came to me and she showed me where she put the down payment in um, and placed the order for a Tesla. And as soon as that happened, I literally had um, 
I had this this anxiety come over me. And it came over me because I'm like, wait a minute. Why why am I getting that? Why does she do this for me? Like I don't deserve this. Like and I and I instead of being excited, as truly excited as I, I should have been, I felt pressure and weight on me. I'm like, well, why is this? You know, why am I having, you know, why am I feeling this way? And, 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 you know, it was, it was, it was the weirdest thing because I had been looking at this thing for years and it's like, here it is. My wife has given it to me. And I asked her, I said, what made you get that for you? She was like, well, she was like, I was, I was, she was joking, but she was like, I was tired of hearing about it. But then the flip side of it, she was like, but I, I, she had prayed about it and God told her to do it. And even then, it's like, I trust the God in her. But even then I was like, I don't deserve this. You know, I'm, I'm not the perfect husband or father and I'm not the perfect person. You know, why, do, why am I deserving this? But I'm sitting here, you know, basically down in myself. And my wife is like excited about, she blessed me with this vehicle, you know, and, and, and you know, a few weeks later it came and I remember going to pick it up. And again, that day I, I got it and I sat in it and I was like, God, this is crazy. And, it, and it's, it's a vehicle, it's a material thing. But it also showed me that if, if God can use my wife to bless me and, and knowing how I felt about something like that, you know, the whole idea of imposter syndrome, the whole idea that I don't deserve this and, and, you know, it, it, it is just counter, it's just counterintuitive to really my faith in understanding that God wants to bless me the same way I want to bless, you know, bless my family he wants to bless us, you know, and give us everything. And, and so it, it kind of drove me to a place where I was like, man, you know, God, I want to be able to do something big for her. And I already wanted, I already wanted to do it. Like I want to get her out of corporate America. I want to be, I want her to be able to do the things that she desires to do. You know, if it's a car that she wants, I want to be able to, to bless her with that. You know, and it's, it's always been that way. And I've been that way, but I felt bad because it's like, I'm getting this car. And originally I said, God, I'm not going to get, I don't want to get this car until I can get my wife away from corporate America. I want her to be able to, to focus on the things that she really wants to focus on and, and use her skills, you know, outside of the corporate world and, and build her own businesses and, and things like that. And so I was like, I, I don't want to get a car until then, you know, now I'd already asked God for the car I already asked for it, you know, but I said, but I put a condition on it. And, and then when I threw my imposter syndrome, it was like, I don't even deserve this because I didn't even do this. So now I got these conditions that I, I'm asking God and God is like, look, I can take care of that and all this stuff, all the other stuff. You just gotta believe. So you know, I say all that to say it it it's something like that that really drove me to like dig into the whole imposter syndrome thing and say, why, why is that? What is it? And do some research on it. And I would I would recommend a lot of us to to really take the time to to do research on that and 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 seek help from a mental health professional. Um, I'm very big about that. Um, you know, there's, there's things in my life that I know that I would benefit from, from, you know, mental health professionals and, and, and it's okay. I think we have to be more open in our community, say our community, the African-American community, but just the, our community as a whole to really leverage mental health professionals. Um, and it may not be that you have something that it, that's clinically wrong with you. It could just be having somebody who is outside of your outside of your home, outside of any close relationship that can look at look at your situation uh, with with um, with a professional viewpoint and give you pointers and, and help kind of navigate you through things. And so I would also promote, you know, there's different books out there. There's different, um, you know, different things. There's a, a book. Uh, by Eileen Kennedy Moore called The Imposter Syndrome Remedy. Um, there's another book called The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. And, and this is for uh, my my female listeners out there. Uh, but it's called The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women by Valerie Young. And, and both of those books, um, you know, do 
doing some research on them, they both really focus and, and help guide uh, guide you through understanding how to deal with imposter syndrome. And it's a real thing. So, um, you know, for those that think that it's just another one of those, one of the other one of those uh, uh, mental health diseases or something. I mean, it's real. Mental health is real. Um, I have been, I've experienced some of that personally. I've experienced some of that with family and I just want to encourage everybody, you know, as believers, one of the main things, one of the main things that we need to make sure of that we're doing, um, for ourselves and really just doing to understand where God has called us to be the people that we're supposed to be. It's it's just important to not allow the enemy to take control of our mind um, and have us face this this level of self doubt, like he he can do. Um, and I, I say that because again, I sit and look at myself. I sit and try to understand why my life has been the way it is, why some things haven't manifested the way. I thought they were. And a lot of it is be, sometimes it's because of my own fears that, that I, I see more so have come about because of the, um, the imposter syndrome that I felt. And, you know, not to say that, that there's also outside forces, you know, there's always things like the enemy coming in and, and, and trying to put things around you to take you away from what your purpose is. But all of those things combined, you know, it's it's easy to get into a funk and get into a, a, the mindset that I can't I can't move forward because I don't want to give people the mindset or the opportunity to poke you know throw darts at me or to um, troll me or or make fun of me. So I'm not gonna I'm just gonna not do the thing that I was called to do to save myself the potential embarrassment or you know the potential anxiety that I may feel. And it was, it, it's a real thing. So I just encourage everybody again to take time to check, see if, you know, look up what, what, um, imposter syndrome is, check it out, you know, make sure that, that you understand. And if it's not too great, you know, but if you know, if you know somebody who's like that, you know, somebody who you're always like, Hey, you're doing great, great accomplishments, this, that, and the other. And they're like, always like, no, I'm not it. I just got lucky or no, that's, you know, no, it's time for them to rise and rise. Like I said, is reclaiming identity, shattering expectations. Um, and it really, the, the, the acronym for rise, you know, it's, it's powerful, but it also in, kind of encap, encapsulates the, the journey from struggling with imposter syndrome to really overcoming it. So that's where, you know, reclaiming identity is when you're, you know, going through the struggle with imposter syndrome and then the, the shattering expectations is overcoming it. And the expectations is shattering your expectations for yourself. The limited expectation that you're setting and it's really seeing yourself for who God is seeing, uh, who has, who God sees you as, um, as the people who love you see you as. So that is is going to wrap up this episode i pray that everybody who has a chance to watch um, or to listen to it i hope you all are, are really able to gather some some good nuggets from it um, i definitely would love to hear any feedback that anybody may have in there their book suggestions if there's other people who are dealing with imposter syndrome and it's causing things you know please be willing to share that um, you know we we would I would love for everybody to to be able to to heal and, and reach the place that they're supposed to be. And that's what this podcast is about. This podcast is about building people, motivating them, getting them out to the place where God has created them to. It's not where I personally want you to go. It's where God purpose for you to go because he knows he knows what he created you for. So as I always end every episode. Um, as a kingdom heir, you were created to flow. So flow on. Thank you guys. Have a blessed evening, day, whenever you get a chance to watch this. And please check us out. Uh, billionaireflow.com is the apparel website. 
Uh, so please go and check that out. That's going to be in the, the description. Um, also, Airflow Podcast is a part of our YouTube channel. We also have the airflowpodcast.com uh, website. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash airflow dot airflow podcast. Uh, we're also on uh, Facebook for the, the apparel brand. So all these things are, are tied together. I am Ricky Thomas. So for those who haven't seen me, this is me. Um, and I just bless. I'm, I'm blessed to, to be able to do this. And I pray that if there's one person who was able to, to get help from any episode that I do, then I'm doing my job. So I, I just believe that this is what I'm called to do and I'm going to continue to do it and I'm going to get better and it's going to get better. It's going to look better. It's going to sound better. Um, I'm very much so I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm always about continuous improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I love you guys. Be blessed. And we'll talk next time on airflow. See you. Thank you.